Welcome to another edition of Issues and Answers. What a pleasure it is to have you join us today. We have a very special guest who will be talking to us about talents. What does that mean, talents? Does it mean money? Does it mean prestige? Does it mean power? Does it mean giftedness? We'll learn more about talents through Pastor Stanley Dixon's personal testimony. But first, a little bit about him. He is a graduate of the Los Angeles City, Co City College Radio Broadcasting and Journalism School and also Oakwood College and the Andrews University Theological Seminary. He's also a former U.S. Navy ship serviceman and honor guard. He's been involved in many youth ministries around the country, has pastored many churches, and has also been involved in television and radio broadcast. Welcome, Pastor Dixon, to our program. It's a pleasure to be here. Tell us about talents. Well, I, 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 talents is, is a very important subject to me because uh, a couple of years ago, uh, the Lord showed me um, what having talents really meant. Mm -hmm. And I and I just like to go back m to my childhood. Okay. Um, well, I grew up in a home where um, there wasn't a lot of laughter, not a lot of joy. My mother had divorced when we were. I had another brother at that time who was uh, five years old, and uh, there were times, uh, very dark times, a dismal period. About five years after that, my mother remarried, and uh, a stepfather came into the picture, and uh, he was not happy about this arrangement. Y you know, with he, the children, with the children involved, and 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 so life was kind of miserable, you know. And I'm talking about, uh, you know, anger mm -hmm. and, and accusing, and and uh, how did just that not, affect you and your brothers? Well, it affected me in, in the sense of. Uh, of looking outside of the home for peer, uh, peer group and peer support, mm -hmm. which resulted in my going outside of the home and in getting involved in gangs and, 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 and the wrong kind of crowd. And where were you living? I was living in Los Angeles, the inner city of Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. And um, fortunately, uh, I, I barely made it out of high school um, because of the, um, uh, the, the commitment towards education. My father was a, a teacher. Mm -hmm. And I, I thought, well, it must be some, somewhat important since, uh, you know, he uh, had already obtained a master's degree. But, uh, but still for me, uh, I think after that uh, experience of, of leaving home, I, I, it was a quest to find happiness and, and joy. And I found out that I couldn't find it, didn't find it in, in the gangs, I didn't find it in the clubs, I didn't find it in the partying. Um, how old were so, you when you left home? Well, I, I was about 18, and I joined mm -hmm. the, the United States Navy. Mm -hmm. So after I got out of the Navy, um, I was still looking. Uh, and uh, I remember when I was young, I used to watch a lot of television. And, uh, and I think for the first time, I saw people you know, laughing and, 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 um, and being happy, at least superficially. Mm -hmm. At that time, I didn't know it. And I decided, after watching certain stand-up comics, that I would go into that field. Because if these people had happiness, mm -hmm. you know, I wanted to be a part of it. I wanted to give it to others. And so I learned how to do stand-up comedy. I learned the craft. And, how interesting uh, for a person who was hurting so much inside to right, choose comedy. To choose comedy. Yeah, it was sort of a Band-Aid approach looking back on it. Mm -hmm. But um, <clears throat> I, I remember in a speech class, uh, the teacher suggested, and this is at uh, a City College, that... Um, you know, why don't you try stand-up comedy, you know, because you're pretty good at arranging facts and ideas in, in, in a funny way. And so I, I took him up on that, and uh, on December, um, I think it was the 25th, mm -hmm. uh, 1977, I went up before a crowd at, at the comedy store in West Hollywood. Oh, that's a very famous spot. Yeah, right. And a lot of people have gotten their start as comedians at right. that place. And uh, the first night was terrible. It was, it was awful. I mean, it was... It was, it was um, um, it was a bad experience, mm -hmm. I'll put it that way. And, uh, and I, I, I couldn't see anything. The, the lights were in front of me, and the timing was off. Uh, people weren't laughing. In fact, people were shouting, you know, get off the stage, get a day job, go west, young man. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I was kind of stubborn, so I said, let me find out what I did wrong. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the next week I came back, I did better. And, uh, and so that began a three-year uh, 
circulating through the comedy circuit in, in, in Hollywood. And by the end of three years, um, I had learned the craft. I don't think I was naturally gifted to be funny, but I had learned how to do it. And, um, and I remember Arsenio Hall uh, mm -hmm. you know, saying, yeah, you know, you really have some clever material and then you ought to keep doing. So he gave me encouragement and uh, Pablo Rodriguez, mm -hmm. Paul Rodriguez, uh, actually asked me to perform open for him mm -hmm. uh, doing a college circuit. And I remember at the improv there were uh, two uh, producers of television programs uh, gave me their card and said that they were going to look me up. And at the same time, I was going through a real dreadful period in my life, um, being without God and, and live, as a young man, you know, living in sin and at the same time trying to achieve something. I was a little bit off balance. And so my life got real uh, bad and, and, um, and it seemed that I had no future, I had no purpose, even though I was pursuing uh, a career, uh, learning how to make people laugh. Mm -hmm. At the same time, even though people were laughing, I was still miserable. I was still unhappy. I was still feeling this sense of emptiness. And, uh, and at the same time, the Lord was drawing me away from the comedy circuit. In fact, he drew me to the University Seventh-day Adventist Church in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. and, and I began to, to study and I began to read the Bible. And I remember one morning, one of the members at university called me for prayer. And uh, at the end of that prayer, I was impressed to turn to Matthew 25. And I'll just read it. Matthew 25, beginning with verse 14. And it says, The kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country, who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. And to one he gave five talents, and to another two, and to another one, and to every man according to his several ability, and straightway took his journey. And then he that received the five talents went and traded with the same and made them other five talents. And likewise, he that had received two, he also gained other, other two. But he that received one went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. Mm -hmm. And when I saw that, and, and, and it, it hit me like a ton of bricks that I was the one who had hid his talent in the earth. And when I was reading the scripture, and I, I can't explain it because there are no human words to describe what happened in that room for the next two hours, mm -hmm. but it was like a presence came into that apartment where I was staying at the time. And the words, even though they were read and I was reading the words, the words became alive. I, I, that's the best I can describe it. And it was like the Father, the Son, and, mm -hmm. and Jesus Christ was right there in the room. And his presence or his nearness toward me uh, enlivened the word. And the word mm -hmm. became living to me. And, and, and I, I saw where the word applied to me, to my own personal situation. I was the one who had buried his talents in the earth. I was in the world trying to, to make a name, trying to be successful, mm -hmm. uh, using God's talent. You know, because the Bible says you are not your own. You're bought with a price. You know, honor God mm -hmm. in your body. I was bearing what God gave me in the earth. Well, and Pastor Dixon, it also meant all, that the fact that God came and allowed you to feel his presence meant that you, even, that you also had talents. Yes. That kind of affirmed to you yeah. that you had talent. I, yeah, yeah, it did. A, it was an affirmation of, of what I had. And it also suggested that there may have been other talents that I ha hadn't even tapped in on yet. Mm -hmm. See, comedy is just one slice of, 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 of a talent, and it was never meant to be taken in on its own um, because you, you can't really laugh or, or laugh without crying to be a whole person. Mm -hmm. And uh, what comedy was doing, at least in the world, was exploiting uh, this, this, this gift to be able make, to make people laugh. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and I cried in my room for, for about, um, about an hour, and I surrendered my life to the Lord, and that was the beginning of, of my conversion experience and also the beginning of, of giving the Lord my talent. So I, I stopped doing the, the stand-up comedy in the nightclubs and using the language. Um, and so what did you do for money? Because that was your job. Well, actually, I wasn't getting paid that much for it. So I, I, you know, I was a full-time student at the time. Okay. So, um, um, but I, I see it as the Lord redirecting me 
uh, away from using uh, uh, talents in, in Satan's venue. Mm -hmm. um, and eventually, um, I begin to, began to, to, to do other things in the church. Mm -hmm. And the Lord showed me that I had other gifts. I had a gift for writing. I had a gift for counseling people. I had other you know, gifts of speaking, not necessarily just making people laugh, but, but, but using whatever I had learned in the comedy circuit to use it for the glory and honor of God. So what happened next? Well, the next thing happened is I enrolled at Oakwood College with a lot of encouragement from the university uh, church members. So church members can make a difference in the lives oh, yes. of young people. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. It was a lot of encouragement. And, and also they utilized what gifts I had. If they had something going on in an AY program, mm -hmm. uh, they would say, hey, Stan, can you do this? Uh, we, we need you to memorize a speech. Can you do this? Do Martin Luther King. Do this. Do that. And so I felt this sense of uh, being needed, and, and, and I felt that, that my gifts were nurtured and developed you know, at the church. And then mm -hmm. they sent me away to Oakwood College. And there, I was impressed to, to follow or pursue ministry uh, as, as, as a career. And, uh, but God had called me before that. Mm -hmm. And he told me to take your talents out of the world and give them to me and watch me multiply them. Amen. So that's been my, my quest since then is, to, is to, to, to continue to study Matthew 25 because there are a lot of lessons uh, as it relates to... Uh, you know, uh, the use of your gifts and, and uh, the development of the gifts and also the, the increasing or mm -hmm. the multiplication of those gifts. So I, I, I've been very fortunate. Um, you know, and the Bible says in Proverbs 17, 22, a merry heart doeth good like a medicine. Yes. And, uh, and I think sometimes even in the church, we, we can be so serious. Mm -hmm. And uh, in fact, I'm serious and, and often accused of that. Uh, and people say, how could you used to be, a, how did you, how, how were you, how were you a, a, a comedian? Because, you know, you seem so serious. And I think it's, it's a reaction to, uh, you know, the world and my associating, soci association with mm -hmm. comedy with the world. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but over the years, I've learned that, um, that it's still useful as long as it's sanctified by God and it's not divorced from, from life in general. In other words, not exploited. Okay. You see. So you still make people laugh. And sometimes it comes out, but naturally now. You know, it may be in a sermon. It may be, uh, for example, to ease tension. Mm -hmm. uh, we had um, a situation where someone uh, stood up to, to sing, and the and the the tape player wouldn't come on, and so there's this paralyzing silence. Yes. And all that is needed at that time is for someone to say something that will ease people. And sometimes, you know, it happens. Uh, where, where you might say something, uh, well, the tape is not functioning and the devil is on. And people will laugh and, and it, it eases the situation. So mm -hmm. there's a use, there's a purpose for, for laughter. And, and there's a doctor um, out at Loma Linda who did a study, mm -hmm. a controlled study. And uh, he showed that uh, laughter actually improved a person's immune system. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. A merry heart. Do it good, Do it good like, like a medicine. Like a medicine, yeah. And a broken spirit dries up the bones. Yes, yes. So it's not a sin to laugh, but it's, it is a sin to exploit laughter outside of the context of, of life and truth. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I, I've learned that in the church that uh, even in a sermon it may come out, but it's not a joke. And, and some of your preachers, even preachers that have been here on 3ABN, you know, I've, I've watched them. They will say something so true that it makes you laugh. Mm -hmm. But it's not, the, 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 the laughter is not the end. The, uh, it, it's not the purpose of what is being said. Mm -hmm. But it's a byproduct of, of what has been said because it's so true. It, it's, it sounds so true, so you laugh. And uh, so it, it's been a help uh, in my ministry. The past has been a help. But not until that talent was surrendered to God and now God gives it back to me mm -hmm. to be used for his glory. Not just making people laugh, but making people whole, um, giving people hope and encouragement. And how about that pursuit for happiness? I found it. <laughs> I Praise found the Lord. It, and I'm, I'm watching other people get the real thing. So now um, you went to Oakwood College. Yes. And, uh, tell us about your experience there. Oakwood, when did you know that the Lord was calling you to ministry? Actually, I knew that before Oakwood College. Um, because I was just attracted to the church. I was att attracted to the Word so much that I would spend days and nights just searching the Word of God. And, and uh, I remember C.D. Brooks uh, did a revival, or I think it was a tent effort, 
mm -hmm. um, at uh, in Los Angeles, and I was there every night. And and as long as the doors were open, you know, I was at the church, and I was usually the last one to leave. And you know, and I, I'm a a new convert, no longer than three months in the church, but I, I had an insatiable desire for for a hunger for spiritual things. And I guess the other ministers saw that, and they encouraged me. The church members, the elders, they saw that, and then they they. Um, encouraged me on. And Elkwood College was like heaven because that same environment um, was reminded me of what heaven would be like. I would sit in classrooms and I would hate for the bell to ring. <laughs> you know, I was like, oh no, we got to go back in, in, in the world again. And uh, E.E. E. Cleveland was one of the instructors. Mm -hmm. um, um, E.C. Ward and, mm -hmm. and you know, some of the old timers. So it was a, a, a rich experience. The two years that I was there, I was a transfer student, mm -hmm. transferring from UCLA, but uh, the two years was very rewarding and it gave me a foundation uh, so that whatever would happen you know, in the future, I was prepared because they really gave me some solid, uh, solid roots and solid foundation. Now, did you go straight way to the seminary after no, Oakland College? No, I went back into the wilderness uh, and it was about uh, two years, two or three years before I went back to, well, went to Andrews. Uh, and at Were that you time, in the ministry pastoring at the I time? I wasn't pastoring, but I, I was ministering, but I wasn't officially a, mi a minister. I was, uh, you know, working as a substitute teacher. So uh, you really had exhibited a lot of faith to yeah. having spent, uh, graduated in uh, theology. Yeah. And then not to have received a call, as they say, which yes. is full-time employment and ministry, but you decided instead to go ahead and pursue ministry because you knew the Lord wanted you to do that. Yes, I, and I, I remember I would be asked to speak and I would help and I would run Revelation seminars. But eventually after three years, I got a little frustrated. I said, Lord, do you really want me to do this? I think I'm gonna change my major and I'm gonna go into psychology because I don't feel that these sacrifices that are being made are, are paying off, you know? And, um, and I remember just being in a park one night and just almost at a point of just giving up. And that following Friday night, um, Elder, um, uh, what's his name? Elder, not Elder Winston, mm -hmm. Elder Taylor mm -hmm. uh, said to me, we voted you in, we voted you in. Just when I was about to give up, uh, the Lord moved upon this committee to say, you know, that uh, you know, you're not, now right. you're a part of the, the, the ministry. But, but the Lord had to teach me some things during that three-year time. What did he teach you? He taught me faith, you know, trusting in God, uh, not to make sacrifices, not to compromise principles, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Yeah, because if you were back God. in Los Angeles again, it would have been just as easy for you to get right back into that. It, it was. It, there were a lot of temptations, um, a lot of inducements, uh, and the comedy field was right there, right in the center. Absolutely. So the Lord said, go back where I found you and, uh, you know, and and do the work of ministry. And just when I got tired, uh, that's, when he, <laughs> that's when he came through. He knows how much we can bear. Now, why, were you married at that time? Was not married, which made it worse. <laughs> because, uh, uh, like I said, but the Lord was developing, uh, you know, the, the, the character traits that I would need later on. Mm -hmm. And the only way he could have done that was to remove all of the, the protection. And he'd sent me in, just like Jesus going into the wilderness. Mm -hmm. Uh, just going in, in there alone and depending upon God, trusting in, in, in Him. So you left from there and you went to Michigan. Went to, to the Michigan. Seven Day Adventist Theological Seminary. Yes, yes. A very different place from Los Angeles in temperature. Yes, yes. But it was there that um, I, I, I learned the tools of ministry. I've already had the, the basis for faith. I've, I've learned that uh, in my own personal study and also Oga College uh, facilitated that. But but at Andrews, I, I learned the, um, uh, the discipline of, of study and of writing and, and uh, of really putting those gifts into use. Mm -hmm. So these are more talents the Lord was placing yes. in your lap and developing. And incidentally, um, when I was uh, looking to, to find out who I was, uh, in, in, in ministry and, and to, to, to find out, Lord, what are my gifts? I, I know, you know, I, I can speak and, and and uh, there's, uh, you know, I know I have the gift of understanding the word. I, I know I have that. But, um, but I, I went back to, to my, um, my, my uh, grade school. Uh, I think it's, it's the office where they have all the CUME reports. Mm -hmm. 
And I, I, I read some of those CUME reports, and it indicated by one of the teachers that, that I had been an excellent uh, person in, in, in writing, okay. especially creative mm -hmm. writing. No oh. one ever told me that. I didn't, I didn't know that. So you never got that teacher comment way back when? Never got it. Never got it from my parents or anything. And so I said, okay, well, that is true. Because I remember when I was at LACC, I, you know, I, was, I was on the student newspaper. Mm -hmm. And um, I didn't think any of it. I just wrote an article. And it won an award, you know. It won an award. So it verified uh, that, that God had given me that gift from an early age. Mm -hmm. And so those are some areas that, that I'm still exploring, uh, the gift of, of writing. Uh, but the most important thing about Andrews University, I, I guess, is I met my wife there. Well, praise the yeah. Lord. <laughs> <laughs> That's the most important. And uh, so it, it, it's been a blessing. But I, I wanted to say uh, uh, maybe a couple of things about talents. Mm -hmm. uh, the Bible says in, in Matthew 25 that, um, that this man who had been given one talent hid that talent in the earth. Now, a talent was something very precious. Mm -hmm. A talent was worth a 15 years wages. That's a lot of money. Yeah, so if you make $30,000 a year, uh, one talent would have been uh, something equivalent to, to $330,000. Wow. Just one talent. And uh, you, you think of the person with, uh, with, with five talents who in, by increase and by faithfulness increase his talents to 10 would have all, over $3,300,000 in today's economy. Mm -hmm. So a talent was something very precious, and it symbolized those internal uh, gifts that God has given us to, to say that if we use those gifts for God, God will increase those gifts, and they're not to be uh, used for the world, but to, to be used for Him in helping to, to win souls for Him. And... Um, I, I, I think uh, it's been uh, a blessing to, to have learned that. Amen. Uh, so uh, how about the guy who then buried all this money in the ground? It, it's unexplainable. I don't know why someone would do That's that. That's a lot of money. I had no idea. It was $300,000. Yes. No wonder why the, the, the master was so angry with that servant right. who That's buried right. that money. It, may, it may, might have even rotted beneath the yeah. earth. Why would a person want to bury that much money, that something so precious. Well, uh, the Bible says that the, when, when he was asked to render an account, you know, for his stewardship, he replied, well, I, I thought you were a hard taskmaster. And, um, and, and the, 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 the condemnation was not so much that he buried it, but the fact that he didn't do anything with it, you know. And, uh, uh, you know, Jesus said to him, well, you know, I could have put my money in the bank and, and mm -hmm. made more money if if I knew you weren't going to, then he was accused of being a wicked and slothful servant. Mm -hmm. So he just didn't want any responsibility, you know. He didn't want to manage. He didn't want to do anything. So he was not uh, given that benediction. Uh, you know, you've been a faithful and, and well done. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you've been a faithful and, and good servant. And so, um, but he receives the, the condemnation. And, and those who, who improve their talents... You know, Jesus said, uh, uh, you know, you've been faithful over a few things. I mean, a person here, a person with 10 talents, he's been faithful over a few things. Just think what it's going to be like in heaven if we're faithful in the use of our talents now. Amen. So what can yeah. we do? Let's say someone is watching the program or, or myself. I want to know, too. What can we do to develop what God has given? What's the first step? Well, the first step is pray. The second step is pray. And the third step is pray. Because spiritual things are spiritually discerned. It's okay to take a spiritual gifts inventory and those kinds of tests, but mm -hmm. the, the bottom line is that God can reveal it to us if we pray. And the second step is to explore, to read about the subject, find out as much as we can about what the Bible has to say about spiritual gifts. And the third step is to experiment. Be open to God's leading and His providence. God may place someone in your path who has the gift of discernment mm -hmm. and will direct you and, and say to you, hey, you, you've got a spiritual gift for, for singing. No, I never thought I could sing, but I've heard you, you know, before, you know, just humming around. So we have to trust uh, God's leading. And if we pray, God will move us into the path of, of discovery. Well, I'm glad you said that because I think that's what we should do. Pray right now. Join us at home. Heavenly Father, I thank you, O oh God, for the precious gifts you've given us that you've thought us not only worthy to save, but 
but also to give us a gift while we're here to enjoy witnessing and to enjoy service for you. I thank you, O oh God, that you, you've given gifts to the church, to the body of Christ, for its upbuilding and edification. Please bless any individual who's listening, with any viewer who's listening, uh, that they will have uh, discernment to, to find out and to discover what those gifts are. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, thank you so much, Pastor Dixon, for coming to our program. Yes. It's been a real blessing to have you here and to learn about talents, yes. that we can pray, we can ask the Lord's leading, we can yes. listen to individuals who have discernment, and we can ask God to... Uh, continue to develop us through experimenting with what he is uh, wanting to do in our lives. Amen. At this time, I'd like to share with our viewers your address, how to contact you, if that's okay. Uh, you may contact Pastor Stanley K. Dixon at 5133 West Condor Drive, Tucson, Arizona, 85742. That's 5133 West Condor Drive, Tucson, Arizona, 85742. If you're in the area, stop by the Sharon Seventh day Adventist Church in Tucson and you can hear Pastor Dixon. Their church service is on Saturdays yes. at 11 o'clock. Yes. Okay. Also, if you wish to phone Pastor Dixon, you may call him at 520 622 2218. Uh, email is 3Angels, number 3, 3Angels MSG at Juno. Dot com. You know, it's always a blessing that when you're trying to make a decision for the Lord, to be able to form in, and to come into agreement with individuals through prayer, through sharing God's word. And we invite you at this time to take that opportunity to call the 800 number that you see on your screen or on your uh, computer screen. Dial that 800 number. There are individuals who are willing to pray with you. Uh, to answer questions that you might be having regarding the talents, regarding God's purposes for your life. We encourage you, please, to dial that 800 number. Do not hesitate. Do not wait. It is never too late to serve the Lord. Isn't that right, Pastor Dixon? It's never too late. He always makes a difference in our lives, doesn't he? Yes, and it, he's always on time. Well, praise the Lord for that. And until next time, we certainly wish the greatest blessings that God has to abundantly pour out upon your life. And until the very next time, may God bless you. And we look forward to seeing you in another edition of Issues and Answers.